Hi, I'm Theo Stocker for Yachting Monthly and I've come to the Dusseldorf Boat Show here in Germany. And I'm going to have a look next at a very special boat, which is the Danish-built Nordship 420 Deck Saloon. Now, this isn't a production boat. The yard build around 10 boats a year, so it's pretty small numbers. Now, if you want something that is fully customizable, a bespoke boat um, that is beautifully built with hand craftsmanship in every bit, then this is a boat that's worth looking at. Starting from the bow, you can see that we've got a short bow sprit there that houses the anchor roller. Um, and we've got a bow thruster. And then coming aft, we've got a relatively slim, fairly high volume hull, but quite deep. So she's a proper cruising boat um, and with a fin keel here. Now, interestingly, the keel is a composite keel made of uh, fiberglass um, with a lead bomb on the bottom and high performance steel going all the way through. The yard says that shouldn't need touching for 100 years. Um, that sounds pretty solid. Um, but that means it's got a very low center of gravity, which means they can put a, a one meter taller mast on than the previous boat that had a cast iron keel. Here you've got a sail drive for the 60 horsepower uh, Volvo engine inboard, the diesel inboard. And then coming aft here, you have a small skeg uh, and then a balanced sp single spade rudder at the stern. As you can see here, relatively conservative lines aft uh, for a modern boat. She's fairly beamy, making a nice aft cabin for the owner. Um, there's no drop down transom, but there is a sugar scoop there for getting into your dinghy or into the water. Um, so something that will appeal to those who like slightly more traditional boats but also a boat that sails beautifully. At the stern, as I mentioned, you've got a sugar scoop transom. Uh, so there's a couple of hatches there. You can just see them going into the aft cabin and then a small platform with a fold down bathing ladder. Uh, there's no life raft stowage or dinghy garage, but you wouldn't expect that. Um, and then a small aft deck and then coming forward to the helm station. So I've come up on board and let's step into the cockpit. Now, as you can see, this is quite an unusual cockpit. It's a center cockpit um, with a helm station aft and it's a reasonably high up helm station to make space for the accommodation down below. It's a large single wheel on a fairly solid pedestal with a little helming cockpit here. Winches uh, lead all the lines aft, um, including the main sheet, um, which comes from the end of the boom onto a traveller just in front of the uh, wheel. So it's a fairly uh, usable rig that you can get a little bit of performance out of. The starboard winch here is a powered winch so that you can uh, have a little bit of help putting the halyard, pulling the mainsail up or sheeting in the main while you're sailing. The headsail sheets also come after here. Um, so then you would, you've actually only got two winches on this boat. So then you would just uh, lock off the sheet that you're not using um, and switch over to the sheet that you do want to trim. Here we go, we've got a nice pedestal here with all of your instruments, compass, throttle, all that kind of stuff. And then you come into the, uh, I guess you call it a social cockpit, um, which has got a large table in the middle. Now that table you can see is actually a cassette sitting over a stainless steel frame. You can lift all of that off if you just want the uh, stainless steel tubes and then you're effectively left with a handhold and bracing position in the middle. Or you've got this table that folds out, um, leaves both sides to make a really nice dining area. And you have a permanently mounted washboard door here, lifts up under this panel and closes like that. So that's very smart, washboard slides across. Lots of teak on this boat, made with stocks of Myanmar timber, 
the yard's obviously looking into teak alternatives, as is the rest of the industry. Um, one small detail to note is you've got a little locker here. This gives you access to the technical room, which you can use as stowage, um, or you can customise it into a, a head. So, uh, but we'll have a look down here, and this one is spec'd out as a small stowage room with a heads through that door aft, but we'll have a look uh, from the inside. Uh, so, and the other thing to point out is we've got these really high combings all the way around, which make it a really deep and secure cockpit. And it's actually completely for free of lines. So if you've got children on board or family, this is gonna feel really safe and secure for them. So combing height, really supportive for your back. Just high enough to put an arm over and giving you really good views forward because you're up at the level of the coach roof when you look forwards. Going forwards from the cockpit, it's quite a step over if you go over the main combing, but come after the helm position, and it's just a low step over the combing. And then you come forwards, and you can see there's this really high coach roof. And a nice detail to note is there are no external handholds Instead, you've got this gutter, which is a really solid handhold, which also ducts water away from running down the windows to keep the windows clear. And you just see some of the finish on this is just lovely. You've got really solid stainless deck gear here with an integral uh, fairly chafe panel um, in the middle of this solid teak tow rail. Uh, and then we go forwards. You've got clear walkthroughs. There are the chain plates, which are actually taken all the way outboard um, so they hold on to the, the whole thickness of the laminate rather than just the inside of the laminate. So coming onto the foredeck, you can see here we've got a self-tacking jib, the standard, and then this boat has a, a deck-stepped mast. On the 50-foot boat version and above, it's a keel-step mast, but on the smaller boats, there's a compression post and a deck-step mast. You can see the halyards are led aft from here. They come up over the windows. And I don't know if you can see under here, there are your fair leads, and they're led aft through a tunnel all the way down aft to the winches in the cockpit. Coming forwards, you've got nice grip moulding here, two permanent vents, as well as um, hatches for the heads, the galley, and the forward cabin. Uh, the cockpit lock is already open for us, so let's have a quick look. You can see here you've got a reasonably deep um, anchor locker, not the deepest, but it does mean that you can reach all the way down into there. There's also a connection for the shore power in here, nicely out of the way, with some little hooks mounted already um, for the wires. And there's space probably for a few fenders in there as well, not loads of space. And then, as this is a Baltic boat, you have an open pulpit with a step off um, just in front of the forced air attachment here. Uh, and then built into the bowsprit is a boarding ladder so that if you're moored bows to onto a rock or in a marina, you can step off nice and easily. Pop the anchor lid down. And that is the anchor locker. So obviously this is a deck saloon with a raised saloon. Um, not everybody's cup of tea, but actually if you want a boat that you can sit at the saloon table and look out 270 degrees around you, uh, then this is a really good option. Lots of deck saloons, in inverted commas, actually have the saloon down in the hull and you only get your view when you stand up. This one is a true deck saloon in that you can see out while you're sitting at the saloon table in there. All of this glass, you can see it's actually flat panels of glass and that's because it's um, extra tough and safety glass that is double glazed, meaning this boat is really insulated and warm if you want to sail through the winter into colder climates up in Northern Europe, um, or even if you had air conditioning down below. Um, there we go, coming aft, and then we're gonna step back into the helm station, just here. Just aft of the helm, you've also got a small deck locker here, 
So lazarette, so just cockpit sole depth, reasonably wide. And that's probably where you would want to keep fenders and lines for mooring. Um, you might just about squeeze a small dinghy folded up in there as well. And then some bins here for the ropes coming aft off the winches. All right, let's head below. So coming down, we've got five steps, which are plain wood, curved steps here. And then we come down into the uh, deck saloon here with the table to port and C-shaped seating around it. And you can see we've got these amazing views through the, um, through the windows all around us. Now, this is a pretty much customizable boat. So as you see it now, you can make a fairly large number of changes to the layout. So we've got a chart table to starboard here with a nice little drawer in, electronics panel there. That could be a different shaped chart table. It could be a galley. Um, at the moment, the galley is down forwards here. But you could also put the galley aft if you wanted to. So behind the companionway steps, let's head aft first, and then we'll have a look around the galley and the chart table. Um, we've got this really nice little snug area, which is quite unusual, and this is effectively the tunnel aft under the cockpit. Here you've got the, uh, the cockpit sole in there. Um, under the steps here is a box that contains the engine. This has got a uh, Volvo 60, although a Volvo 50 horsepower is standard. And you've got absolutely amazing access into the engine there. Uh, but you can take the sides off this box and there's full access on the other side. So you can easily get to every part of the engine. Uh, it's a really solid box with good insulation as well. There's a small, ta a small chair just aft of it there. And then we've got two armchairs um, outboard here on starboard. Uh, you can actually get rid of this bar. So this is sort of a little drinks cabinet or something for a little whiskey in the evening. Or you can stick the kids down here and they can watch a film while you're up in the cockpit. Um, you can get rid of that and then you've got a nice little sea berth um, if you wanted to have that which is sort of really near midships. Stowage throughout everywhere you can see lots of solid wood trim, solid wood doors, hinge down, everything's varnished there are no raw edges in this boat. Um, shelf for books so I could definitely imagine sort of sitting down here and reading a book on a cold winter's night. And then coming aft into the uh, owner's cabin you've got a, a full width cabin here uh, with an island berth and access on both sides. Headspace above it is limited. Up here, that's the footwell for the um, helming cockpit, um, the little helming station there. Uh, so headspace above the bunk is limited, but what you're getting in this boat is an aft cabin with a centre cockpit and a deck saloon, all in 42 foot. And I'm pretty sure there aren't any other boats on the market that offer that combination of options. As with elsewhere in the boat, you've got absolutely loads of stowage, hanging space, and you'll notice that as I open these, they've all got lights inside, so you can see what you're doing, which is a really nice little touch. There we go, lots of shelf space. Uh, well ventilated, you've got these slots top and bottom to make sure you don't get any musty, musty lockers. Um, they're under the berth, this is worth having a look at. You can see that there's more stowage, but the beds are on slatted bases, again, to help with air circulation, keep things nice and fresh. And you can access that for stowage of bags and bedding, whatever cruising clobber you want to take with you. Um, this boat has got a heads. It's not a shower compartment. You could opt for a shower compartment as well if you wanted to, um, but this is also the technical room. So let's have a little look. So this is really a sort of a, a night heads for the owner's cabin. You've got a, a simple sink and a toilet there. I'm sure they would fit you a shower if you wanted to. This one doesn't have a shower. And then there's another door going forwards here. It's a little bit of a maze. So we're going forwards on port side now through the little tunnel under the, um, under the cockpit. And in here we have the technical room or a storage room or a workshop or whatever you want to call it. So you've got hanging space there. You've got a bit of a, a seat workbench. That's actually the other side of the engine box. And then outboard here, you've got drinks at the moment. I'll come in and have a seat. But you've got stowage under there, a bit dark, sorry. And then above that, you've got this nice sort of workbench area. Now you could actually opt not to have the heads in this cabin and you would have a really large 
workshop area that you could also keep downwind sails, fenders, dinghies, folding bikes, all of that sort of stuff. And then if I open up here, you can see that's where we open to in the cockpit. So you can drop the thing straight down from the cockpit, straight into this um, little room here. But you've still got really nice finish everywhere, properly varnished floorboards. Um, so the attention to detail throughout this boat is just lovely. And then you've got access in here to some more technical spaces, electrical systems, ducting, vents, and pumps. Sorry about the lighting. And then you can come back up, pop up into the cockpit. Right, heading forwards again. Let's come to the chart table first of all. Here's the chart table. So you've got a movable office style chair. That's quite nice. So you can actually properly work here and sit in comfort. Lots of people working remotely these days. There's a little bit of stowage in a drawer there. Pens, pencils, maybe a laptop. Uh, but not very much chart stowage. For that, most people use this larger drawer here um, under, the, uh, under the saloon table. Um, you do have below the chart table some more lockers and behind the seat as well. So you've got loads of locker space everywhere. And there's also a sort of a semi wet locker just after that. And this is where you probably keep life jackets and foul weather gear when you come down below. It's a very neat electrical panel here with a simple switch panel, chart plotter, and a stereo here. The real magic comes when you open it. Let's see if I can do this. So here's the electrical panel. So this hinges down. And inside you have possibly one of the neatest electrical distribution systems that I have ever seen. Let's see if we can give you a bit more light in here. There you go. Yeah, so you can see you've got all of these really neat wires. Every cable is labelled and numbered. It all goes through a Victron charger there. Sorry, the light's not very good again. You've got a Victron charger, which means that you can access all of the data all of the statistics about how your boat's functioning, what systems are working, what aren't, remotely. Um, so either you can do that for peace of mind or if you've got a problem when you're out cruising, you might be anywhere in the world, but you can give the yard a call, they can access your electrical system and help diagnose faults, which I'm sure is actually pretty handy. Right, the saloon, we had a little look. Here's a table, you've got some bottle stowage beneath. This, as with everything else, is optional. So uh, the standard is actually for a cabinet there with a little bit more stowage. Um, although it's, it doesn't look quite as open, it's maybe a little bit more practical. And then you've got stowage under all of these seats as well. So if I can lift this up. So you've got cavernous lockers underneath there. There is an option to turn that space into a berth and that would be accessed from where the forward heads is. So we'll have a look. And at the forward end, you've got this sort of rather nice sort of panel and that box is in the heads. And nothing on there at the moment. You could probably add a bookcase or something. Right, let's step down into the galley. Uh, this one's got a forward galley to starboard. Uh, it's a little bit deeper down in the boat, but when you're standing down there, you can still see at eye height out of the boat and talk to everyone in the saloon nice and easily. Um, you've got an opening hatch up here for ventilation, which is very important. Then we've got a double sink and a two burner gas hob. Um, and there's space for two or three gas bottles on deck. I'll show you that later actually, um, if I haven't already shown you. Loads of lockers, really nice drawer space as well. I mean, all of this is finished, varnished, hardwood finish. Um, so it looks lovely. One, two, three, four, and deep drawer underneath there. Big cupboard and bin under the sink. Lots of space down the back here for bottles, plates, whatever you want. And again, more nice locker space above. And the lighting's really good. Not everybody will want to be in a galley that's sort of down in the boat, but I don't feel too cocooned in here. 
Um, uh, but it would, I do feel well protected, so it's quite a narrow space, so you can brace while you're cooking, and I'm sure that feels pretty secure. Little touches like this are nice. Little door pops open here, and there's all the electrical wiring for the base of the mast. Fridge-wise, in this boat you've got a front opening fridge, which goes under the saloon seating here. Um, it is side opening, so if you were on starboard tack, you might lose a few things out, although the shelves do have fiddles on. And again, I'm sure the yard could sort something else out. You could put drawers in, you can have fridge space here, you can have fridge space further forwards, loads of options. Moving forward from the galley, before we get into the forward cabin, let's just have a look at the main heads, which is a pretty large space in here. And then you've got a toilet, sink, lockers in the same style. And here is your separate shower stall with a Perspex door and a large seat. That's a really generous, comfortable cabin that you can easily move around, have a shower, get dressed, and you won't get the rest of the locker space wet, the, the um, cabin space wet. Um, you can opt for smaller heads in here. And then in this part, you could have access to a third cabin where the berth would go underneath the saloon seating and you would access this just next to the mast. This boat's got the two cabin version. And then coming forwards into a slightly smaller four cabin, it's two meters long up to this edge here. So, and slightly longer to port. Stowage underneath with easy access. And there you've got, you can see you've got loads and loads of space in there. Um, nicely hidden lighting under the shelves and lots of solid wood locker space. So you're gonna have more than enough space for longer term cruising. And then again, you've got hanging locker space there with the light inside. So let's have a look underneath the um, cockpit sole here. And in here we've got batteries and they're actually gonna be moved, the batteries are gonna be moved further aft to get them out of the way. And you've got a, a pump here that's also going to be moved so that you can have a nice clear stowage space down here that they'll box in. We've got um, a water tank here. There's another water tank to starboard. This is the hot water calorifier. And there you've got the diesel tank. So all of the weight for the boat is really central. And then underneath this, you can see these big steel, galvanized steel girders, and they connect onto the keel um, to spread the keel load around. Um, this is an incredibly stiff boat, so all of the calculations for stiffness are, are done basically not taking the steel into account. They then add in these steel girders, making it even stiffer. It's a traditionally built boat, so it's hand laid up um, really thoroughly by proper ship boat builders. So this boat structurally is laid up hand laminate, um, incredibly strong, um, built by hand rather than vacuum infusion. So they've gone for strength over necessarily weight saving. Um, and then every single piece of furniture that you can see in here is structural. So everything is laminated into the hull. There are no modules that are simply stuck in. There's no sycophlex around. Everything is laminated into the hull as an individual piece. And that means that everything becomes structural and that the more pieces you put in, you can see here these lockers are bonded to the bulkheads. The bulkheads are bonded under this little edging strip into the hull. And that means that the lockers stabilize the bulkheads, the bulkheads stabilize the hull, and you have a really strong, stiff structure that should last a very long time. So that's the Nordship 420 deck saloon. I hope you've enjoyed having a look around. I think she's an absolutely beautiful boat. Now clearly something like this doesn't come cheap um, and the base price for this boat is 539,000 euros excluding VAT. The boat, as we've looked at it today, this actual boat 
you could buy this for 620,000 euros excluding VAT. Now that's not cheap but there are not many boats that are built today that have this level of craftsmanship and this level of customizable options where an owner's wishes can really be taken into account. If you want something that is this beautiful then this boat is definitely worth a look. Thank you.